Hello and welcome back again everyone. I have another project I want to work on. This is nothing too special. Kind of like my last video I worked on my brother's laptop. My sister has her laptop and her and my mom have to use it from time to time. But they don't really use that often. It still has an original hard drive in it. And I don't think it's been maxed out on RAM. So I decided I'm going to do both of those things. Uh, I'm going to see how much RAM's in it. I think I have spare RAM pieces I could put in it. And then I'm also going to look in cloning the hard drive to an SSD. So when they do use it, it doesn't take like 5-10 minutes to boot up. Now this model, I think, was made around 2012-ish or something. I do know that the one back port is a USB 3.0 port. So there's that and Ethernet on the back. There's a VGA out, power cable, HDMI out, eSATA, USB, SD card slot, and then I believe there's two more USBs on the other side. Oh, there's only one more there, and then the optical drive, the mic, and the headphone jack. So it's a little dusty, so is the power supply. I'm going to kind of wipe those off real quick and clean a little bit, and then I'm going to open it up. I also do not remember the model number off the top of my head. So it looks like it's a Dell Inspiron N41110. I'm sorry. <laughs> looks like it's a Dell Inspiron N4110. Uh, I think there's an alternate model in there, but it's hard for me to read this angle, so we'll just leave it at that. It originally came Windows 7, and at some point I upgraded to Windows 10 when those free upgrades first started. So, let me wipe this down for a minute. So it wasn't too messy. I'm going to eject the battery before I open it up. I think I got this the right way. Yeah. Pop the battery out and make sure that that's kind of not charged. And I'm also going to pop up and put on the power button just to make sure it discharges. This looks simple. It looks like there's only one little like cover pad. Okay, so I thought you could just get the drive easily from here, but I guess I was wrong. I probably have to do a full teardown to get to the drive, but I was right. It seems to only have one RAM stick in it, and it looks like it's a 4 gig Samsung DDR3 stick, and I'm most certain that I have another one of these. Before I go and do that, I'm going to actually set that to the side, and I'm going to see if I can find out how much RAM this uses completely. So the good news was I was right. I do have a RAM stick, I have another 4 gig, and it looks like this maxes out at 8. So if I put these two in, it should be good on that end. Now I just kind of have to figure out how to pop it open and get to the hard drive. Let me just set these and the panel to the side. Set the charger and battery over a little bit. So to kind of keep things from getting like scraped around or moved around, I do have this iFixit anti-static bag. I don't really need to worry about static on the table I'm on really, but I kind of just want to get it so it doesn't get scraped as I push it around. Man, that thing definitely smells like fresh rubber. So if I'm correct, just guessing from my experience, I should just have to remove the screws on the bottom assembly, the one that holds the optical drive in place. And then I should be able to just pop off the bottom part of the assembly. I might be wrong, I might need to remove the keyboard as well. Which it looks like it has little tabs on it. If I do, I'll show you that. Also, I know I didn't cut my nails this week, so they're kind of long. Start with the optical drive, because the way that's set in there, I'll have to remove it in general. Okay, I was interrupted, but it's fine. There are two screws under the optical drive, so if you're taking it apart, don't forget those. Okay. 
Okay, so I got out all the bottom screws there. So there are just two more screws under the battier area, and I should be able to pop off the bottom. Okay, with that, all the bottom screws should be out. I should be able to just start popping off the bottom assembly. I don't think I need to remove the keyboard at all. Just to make sure, I think I'm going to pop off the keyboard, because I think I might actually have to pop that off and that this top part actually goes off. Okay, after more effort than I should have had, uh, I did get those four tabs out. I don't know why it was so difficult. If you do do this, be careful not to rip this cable. Reach down here and pop open the little connection for it. And there you have the keyboard to the unit. I'm probably going to dust this out since I'm going to do all this stuff. Then all we need to do is get the screws out in the middle here. So there's one, two, three, and then four. Here's the trackpad cable if you need to know that. Uh, this was probably for something else. Or maybe that's the fan cable. Yeah, that is actually something being used. And that's the power button cable. So I did miss a screw right here, and then I realized before I pop that off, you want to make sure that you want to actually detach those ribbons, since some of them are attached to the part of the assembly that we are removing. And I wasn't expecting this. It looks like the hard drive is under the motherboard, so we would need to remove the motherboard from the bottom assembly. So make sure that you have the speaker detached and also the fan detached along with this ribbon cable. And it looks like we'll also have to detach the monitor to get the motherboard out. So, so you kind of just tug off and pop off. And it looks like the monitor and display cable actually has a little ground that attaches to the motherboard. So there's a screw here, 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 here there and it looks like they're actually labeled B1 to B5 along with this grounding one. Okay, now that everything is detached, I should be able to lift up, pop off this board, and then have the motherboard and get to the hard drive. Looks like everything's been moved out screw-wise, and I should be good. Oh, maybe I was wrong. I might have to remove the fan beforehand. Alright, I got that out, and it looks like there was a bit of animal hair in there. I'm pretty sure this pops off, but I'm having issues, so what I'm going to do is pop off the little antennas. And try to pull out this whole board. Okay, I was nervous, but this does pop off. It was just very firm from being attached for, I think, a whole decade now. So after that... Oh, I did forget to detach one thing on the other side. That looks like that's the connection for the VGA, huh? Alright, we got the main motherboard out now. Looks like this is one where you could actually replace the CPU if something went bad, or you could redo the thermal paste. While I have it out, I'm going to redo the thermal paste and kind of clean this. So for now, here's where the hard drive is. It looks like there is one screw that goes into the motherboard to kind of keep it in place even if you detach it like this. I'm going to back up the hard drive off of it before I attempt to clone an SSD. 
All right, that drive's gonna take a bit to back up. So while we have it, I'll try to be careful. I don't wanna really flex the hard drive too much, but there should be four screws for the main processor to hold the heat sink on. So we're gonna clean this with some rubbing alcohol. Kind of blow the dust and the, the fur and stuff off of it. And then there are two little screws for the GPU part. I don't remember what GPU's in this. Oh sweet, the GPU has one of those little rubber things, so if I just rub it down some rubbing alcohol, I should be good. Nice, those little rubber pads kind of go around all those different parts of it. Alright, so it took me a little bit, but I got most of it, uh, just the fact that I cleaned it off with some rubbing alcohol. Always remember to use like 91% rubbing alcohol, don't use like water, any kind of regular cleaner, don't clean these off. And I happen to have a little container. Now, some people say do it based off of caps near the board, uh, that depends on what you're putting on. I should probably put about that much in, and when we put the heat sink on, it should re-spread it along that. Once you get it set up, kind of just screw them in place kind of loose. This will make sure that it's lined up. Properly. And then after you get them all kind of loose, then go back and kind of tighten it up and make sure they're all in there secure. You kind of want to do this so it doesn't tighten one end too much and put too much pressure on another end. And that kind of helps push down and dissipate everything. So, we're going to have to do a time lapse until I finish cloning that drive and backing it up. So, I cloned it to a solid state drive with a little less storage. I'm going to put that in place, and then if I believe it's this little screw that holds into the motherboard. Uh, for this, just because the nature of sometimes cloning these, uh, I get weird results where it doesn't boot right. I'm not going to do a full reassembly until I know it boots normal, and then I'll do one. So what I'm going to do is do a partial reassembly and then I'm going to hook in a USB keyboard and mouse and make sure it boots properly. Technically you don't need the mouse pad or, oh I guess I do need the power button. I can still do that. Yeah, I don't need the optical drive, I don't need the mouse pad attached or the track pad and I don't need the keyboard attached for it to do everything I want to do. We definitely will need the fan. Uh, it might last a little bit without it, but I would not risk it ever. All right, we got the video and then the VGA out plugged in. We got this reattached to the board. I'm gonna plug in the speakers to make sure they work okay. The Wi-Fi is reattached. I removed that before, but I didn't have to. Uh, we don't really need to really attach much more besides the power button, which is this little flap right here. So, if you just kind of secure it enough to attach it. I almost forgot to add the RAM. Without this, we're not going to be able to get the boot at all. 
And then I am adding another RAM stick to it, and this should max out the RAM at 8 gigs for the motherboard. Once those are both secured, I'm going to lay it down. I have the power cable plugged in. We're not going to put the battery in. Plug it into the power slot on the back. And then I might have to change one of the BIOS settings. Okay, I forgot one of the cables in the back. The good news is it looks like it's going to boot up to Windows without me changing anything to the OS. Or not the OS, the BIOS. So that's a sign that that one good. Hey, the unit boots up normal. Uh, it looks like there's some older programs and antiviruses on here. So I'm going to have to clean that up. And it looks like there hasn't been some updates run. The fan's running louder than it should. I don't know if that's because I cleaned it out. I did put new thermal paste on, so all that should be good. And let's see if it reads all the RAM properly. So it is using all the RAM. Um, I'm going to let it run a little bit. And then I'm going to let all the updates go and reassemble it. Alright guys, so I decided to kind of reassemble it off camera. Everything works. Uh, the CPU runs a little rough, but that could be because it's an older processor running a newer version of Windows 10. Uh, that happens sometimes. It is maxed out at RAM. It's completely reassembled. So I hope that you enjoyed this project. Hopefully if you're looking at this for an idea of how to upgrade the RAM and take out the, uh, and take out the hard drive, you got some idea of what you're doing now. So I'm going to cut that part out, but there was a graphical issue there for a second. Um, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed my project that I worked on. Hopefully it gives an idea if you're watching this for reference of how to upgrade this unit or take it apart in general if you have to fix it up. I'm definitely pro like repair it yourself and kind of preserving these laptops. And like I said earlier, if you have an old laptop, sometimes if you just max out the RAM and put an SSD in it, it will completely serve all the purposes that you need. And then you can just make less e-waste by reusing something. Uh, if you can do it yourself, go ahead and do it. If you can't, hopefully you can find someone that will do it for you for cheap. Uh, I can't really do this for anybody right now, so nobody asked me at the moment because of my current job. I'm not allowed to do it outside of work. But I hope you enjoyed. And again, this is the Dell Inspiron N4110. Made in North America. This was made, I think, 2011-ish. Oh well. And I hope to see you guys again soon with another project. Take care, enjoy, happy holidays, and stay safe.